learning objective include what is a culture and a culture medium, what is needed for bacterial growth in the lab, and uses of solid medium and colony characters, how we can study them in the lab. Now, a culture medium is, of course, is a nutrient material for bacterial growth. Some bacteria grow easily. They can be grown in the lab easily, but some are very fastidious. They don't like to grow very well, so we need special nutrient for them and special conditions for them. There is a word inoculum that needs a definition or defining here. Inoculum is basically the microbes that are introduced into a culture to start a culture or to initiate the bacterial growth. That small amount of bacteria, few bacteria that we take from a source of sample or from a colony and put into a nutrient medium is called an inoculum. You would also encounter word culture. So culture basically um, is also called microbes that grow or multiply in a culture medium. As a whole, this is also called a culture. Like you see here, um, this, these are all, all colonies, uh, we would call them a culture. Whether they're on the liquid medium or a solid medium like this. So what is needed to grow an organism in the lab? Obviously, we have talked about all those physical and chemical requirements. And if we meet those in a lab situations, we are able to grow a microbe. And of course, right nutrients for the type of microbe which include carbohydrates, proteins, minerals, vitamins, oxygen, water, oxygen or no oxygen. Similarly, we would have to incubate the microbes at such certain uh, temperature. Also provide some pH and osmotic pressure, of course. Medium in which the bacteria or microbes grow could be fluid or could be solid, like a agar plate. This requirement is very important, sterility. Just for bacterial growth, although you don't need sterility, but because when we grow in the lab, we need a pure culture. We need to identify what is in the sample, not just what is in the environment, you know. And that is the reason we make sure that no other microbe grows in our culture other than the intended one. And that is the reason sterility is very important. And especially when you are testing for various uh, presence of various enzymes or biochemical testing, we need to make sure that no other bacterium grows in the lab, in the test tube, or on a solid medium that we are using. Like I said, medium could be solid, like this. It's a blood agar here. You can see from the color. And it could be a fluid as a Newton broth. This is a medium, liquid medium. Sometimes we use liquid medium. Sometimes we prefer using a solid medium. We'll talk in a minute when we use solid and when we use a liquid medium. For solidification of a liquid medium, we use a substance called agar. Agar is derived from a seaweed. Basically, it's a complex carbohydrate. Bacteria do not use it. Usually, the, most of bacteria that we grow in the lab, they do not use this complex carbohydrate. So, it is purely used for solidification of the medium. And the property of this agar is such that when we boil at 100 degrees Celsius, it is liquefied, becomes liquid in nature. But when we cool this to uh, below 40 degrees Celsius, it solidifies, becomes solid. And we can pour uh, in the Petri plates or we can make slants. This is a slant here or slant. It has a, a kind of angled surface, which we call a slant or slant. And this whole tube, which is filled with uh, the medium, is called a butt. So this is a butt here, uh, this is a slant, this is also a slant, but if we do not make a slant like this and pour our solid medium into tube like this and then we stab this with the inoculum, this is called a deep. As you can see here, um, we can make medium, solid medium, pour solid medium into, into tubes like these and then we can uh, streak our bacterium for testing for various chemicals and reactions. Now, why a solid medium is used? Uh, as I mentioned that it has, you know, liquid medium and solid medium has its own uses. It is easy for us to purify the culture on a solid medium by a technique called streaking. Also, on the solid medium, we can uh, study the colony characters. First of all, let's see how uh, we can obtain a pure culture on a solid medium. 
So let's say we have a, a, a platinum loop or an oculum that we used here the first time from the source of uh, the sample. What we do is we, we touch our inoculum here and then sterilize the loop, the platinum loop, which is used for transferring bacterium from one place to the other. Uh, we sterilize it after touching it and then after sterilization, we make uh, various lines like these. And then at the end, when we reach here, we again sterilize the loop and we cool it down and then make other lines, three, four, five lines from touching the last line here. So what it does basically when we touch the last line, it basically drags few bacteria that are sticking here onto this line here. And then we also spread um, further, make few more lines. Similarly, when we get here, we again uh, um, sterilize the loop so that those bacteria that are sticking on the loop, they uh, are sterilized, they're killed, removed. And then again, we keep this um, streaking pattern like this. What happens at the end is, as you can see here, uh, the bacteria, by this streaking action over and over, they start uh, diluting themselves. So it is a kind of dil dilution making on the solid medium. Uh, as you can see that when we re reach at this area, the here the colonies are um, the growing very next to each other, so like a smear. We cannot really identify individual uh, colonies there. But as we reach on this part, you can see that the there are individual colonies. So when they, we reach the individual colony level, we can study the colony characters. For example, we can study the characters, overall character appearance of the colonies, which is we call forms of bacterial colonies. So they could be uh, called as punctiform if we, you see very small dots. The colonies look like dots. We call them punctiform. If they are a little bigger and circular, uh, round, we call them circular. Sometimes some bacteria would form these kind of colonies. They would appear like filamentous, like threads running in all directions. Similarly, if the colonies' edges are irregular like this, we call them irregular colonies. Rhizoid is basically filamentous-like, but filamentous and the difference between these two is that you see here branching, further branching. But here these are individual filaments or fibers growing along. Then there is another colony spindle, uh, which is at the ends is, is smaller and the middle is larger. So this, these are various characters uh, or the forms of different colonies we can, and these can only be studied on the solid medium. On the basis of uh, elevation, we can call these colonies as flat, raised, if they're a little, you know, more elevated, convex, the middle uh, bump like this, or pulvonate, the bump is like a big cushion. And ambunate, when they have a bump in the middle, overall it's a convex colony, but then there is another bump uh, in the middle. It's called ambunate. Similarly, margins of the colonies could be studied as well. This is called entire, which is smooth, uh, entire margin. Undulate, when it, it waves, a kind of wavy structure like this. If these waves, you know, they extend too much into it and out of it, it becomes kind of lobulate or lobate lobe likes these are different lobes uh, the margins could be zigzag like this it's called eros and filamentous if there are like thread like structures appearing in a curled a swarming kind of growth various patterns in a, in a wavy form in summary inoculum is the our number of few few uh, few organisms that we put uh, for initiating bacterial growth culture is what is grown uh, or which is growing in the medium as a whole is called a culture. Culture medium is a nutrient uh, medium that provides nutrition to the bacteria. And then we can study colonies on a solid agar. Um, the colonies have forms, elevations, and margins.